In this demonstration, we're going to look at the lofted flange command. And here I'm going to create a base lofted flange by selecting these two curves. Select the first curve, I'm going to push the thickness to be outside, select the second curve, and my lofted flange is created. What you will see here now in bend segments is this is using the formed bending method. This creates non-planar, non-cylindrical, and non-conical faces. So best fit between the two curves. We now have two further options. We have advanced, which attempts to create only planar, cylindrical, and conical geometry. And this particular set of geometry, although it can be created, it cannot be flattened. And the third method is bends. Create only planar faces and cylindrical bends. And here what we see is a number of additional options have been generated. So if we take a look at what has been created here, between the two curved sections, when necessary, we've divided the geometry, the curved geometry, into planar and regular bends. Each bend takes on the bend radius defined in the dialogue, in this case three millimeters. And I can control this by the number of bend segments. I can have anything from one, two, three, four, five, 10, 20, and so on. If dividing the part by bend segments is not appropriate, then we have three more options. We can divide by chord height the distance from the linear section to the, to the curve is a maximum of 6.5. It might be less based on the geometry. And changing the chord height automatically generates the correct number of bends to achieve that maximum chord height. Similarly, segment length. I can define the segment length. This is the maximum segment length of each one of these planar segments. Again, it might be less than this, depending on the resulting geometry. And finally, I can define this by segment angle. And this is the maximum angle that will be used to generate the different areas. One more thing to note here in the relief, where these bends are created, the material is set back and it's set back to ensure the feature doesn't fail from the bends actually crossing each other. And what we can do here, we can trim the end plate. So this is the untrimmed state where the plates on either side or the webs are not trimmed. And this is creating them back either linear or spherical in shape. Now let's create a flat pattern. And we can have a look at the bend geometry here. Now I've got a configuration here that's just identifying each bend with a number. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an instance that I've created for a flat pattern view and generate my bend data of bend radius, as we can see, they're all three. My bend angle, or you could use the included angle. Moving on to secondary lofted flange. Secondary type has been automatically selected because I've already got some geometry here. I select my two curves and once again, I can choose my method to generate the geometry that's required. Just to show that we can do this within the part itself, I can generate the bend table in the 3D view 